All right, thank you. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, so before I go directly into the Eclipse Smart Home Engine and what we did with it, I want to give you a little bit of context where I'm coming from and how we actually, you know, uh, or how Bosch actually got involved in the Eclipse Smart Home uh, project. Um, so, some of you may know um, the company called Prosist. Um, Prosist was acquired in 2015 by, uh, by Bosch and we had a legal merger in uh, July 2016. Um, Prozis was always, let's say, uh, known for being one of the um, OSDI framework implementers um, with, let's say, specific focus on embedded devices, um, like, for example, KiwiCon or uh, Deutsche Telekom Smart Home and so on. Um, and we also have a remote management system to manage all these environments. So, um, yeah, so Deutsche Telekom, KiwiCon was, you know, one of our larger uh, projects. Um, so we, we um, you know, provided the gateway software for the KiwiCon uh, home base and the remote management system and everything. Um, and uh, during the course of the development, Deutsche Telekom decided they also want to open up uh, KiwiCon more um, and make use of Eclipse Smart Home. And that's where we basically got together with uh, Kai and, uh, you know, um, yeah, started uh, developing the automation engine, which is now part of um, the KiwiCon uh, platform. And um, with our latest release of the Bosch IoT Gateway software, um, also part of that. All right. So, um, yeah, a little bit about the concept. Um, so basically, you know, when it's, it's sort of a rule engine, um, the automation engine, right? So um, each rule is, let's say, made up of, of modules. And uh, so we have three different categories. We have triggers, we have conditions, and we have actions. Um, I guess they are sort of self-explaining in itself, but, uh, you know, a trigger is something when something specific happens. Um, and uh, a rule can have many triggers and each one of them can basically, you know, trigger um, to start the rule. Then you have, an uh, uh, example is here, you know, window state changes, right? Um, so then you have also conditions. So when, let's say, a trigger or when, when something has triggered something, um, before you start executing the role as a rule, um, also the conditions, uh, let's say, need to be checked and satisfied. Um, so in this case, it could be, uh, for example, window is open, um, alarm system is on. Yeah. Um, so we, if both these uh, conditions are met, then you know the rule gets executed, and then the action is the actual, um, yeah, the actual work to like turn on the light or start the alarm system, call the police or whatever. Um, and um, yeah, so this is basically the response to the actual um, trigger then. Um, so this is sort of how it works, yeah. Um, so when, if then, if you want, right? So when a trigger, uh, let's say when something is, has been triggered, then you not notify the automation engine. It checks, um, let's say, the, the conditions uh, for the specific rule. When all the conditions are met, um, then the action is, is going to start. And if, let's say, um, the execution, something, let's say, uh, doesn't, does not, uh, uh, let's say, cannot be executed, the rule stops. So, um, the module, of, as I said, so we, we have modules here, um, and these modules are independent from each other. So they have all inputs and outputs, and this is basically how they interact with each other. But each module in itself um, is, let's say, you know, um, yeah, independent. So um, this is uh, the, the life cycle of the rule. So when you create a rule, it is, oops, sorry, initialized. Yeah, when you start resolving it, you go into an initialization uh, mode. When it is resolved, you have an, an idle uh, mode. Yeah, and then you can actually start start using this uh, rule. Um, and basically, uh, when it started, yeah, and it finished, it goes uh, back in the idle uh, mode. And if you don't want to use it any longer, you basically disable it and um, can also, you know, um, 
bring it back to the initialized uh, um, state. Um, so pretty much like you know how how OSGI works, I would say. So architecture. So this is how we use it in the Bosch IoT Gateway software. Um, so you have um, here resource providers um, for bundle resources, uh, system uh, files, or even third-party providers that you may need to, you know, build your rules or your module types and so on. Um, and then you have here the automation core, as we call it. Um, so here we have the actual rule engine. Um, we have registries for rule templates for the actual rules, uh, module types. I will explain this a little bit later, what this exactly is. So it's actually, um, let's say, sort of functionality that you don't already have. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, you want to compare conditions, for example. That would be a new module type that you could introduce. Um, so then we have, um, this is let's say part of, um, or this is part of um, the Eclipse Smart Home uh, project as well. And here we have some extensions um, that we did in the Bosch IoT Gateway software, which are related, for example, to our functional items. Uh, functional item is uh, basically our um, digital twin uh, within the OSGI framework, where we can basically, you know, get, uh, resource uh, data where we can, you know, uh, do command and control um, over the devices and so on. Um, yeah, and then we have some, some admins um, so that we basically, you know, can interact with these, uh, you know, uh, functional items and the rules and so on. Um, yeah, we have a, a web um, um, service or a REST interface. Um, we'll show this uh, in the following slides which is also, um, you know, uh, part of uh, Eclipse Smart Home. Um, we have the OSGI uh, script engine, so it's basically, you know, um, sort of, you know, that you can build um, JavaScript with NAS1 and, and um, use this in here. And uh, the web console is sort of, um, yeah, a visual um, user interface. Instead of programming your rules, or um, your uh, triggers and so on, you can actually define this in a, a UI-based uh, way. So here we have the, the JSON definitions for the module types. So here you basically um, define, um, you know, what bundle resources, system file resources you need. You have the general structure, like, you know, uh, triggers, conditions, and actions. And then you have uh, common uh, module type fields that you basically use uh, for, like, ID, for description, uh, for text, and so on. Um, so it's, I would say, pretty um, straightforward. Um, we have the same for, for trigger types, yeah, so you have, uh, you know, ID for, for the trigger, you can label it, you have a description, um, and then uh, the name, what type it is, um, and again, um, description for, for the, for the um, module. Um, condition types, also here you can basically define new types of conditions, yeah, so we have already predefined a couple of conditions as well as triggers and so on, I will show you um, um, the, the already existing ones uh, later on, but it basically follows the same um, sort of um, concept here. Um, so then action type, so yeah, also here, uh, inputs, outputs, yeah, so what, uh, you know, do I need as an input in order to, let's say, start, um, you know, an, an action and so on. Um, then we have a rule defined by modules, so you, as, as, you, as, I, as, I, uh, or as I said, um, it's all module based, so you can already use existing modules and basically define based on this a new um, a rule. So, and um, also with uh, templates, you can basically, you know, reuse existing templates um, for, for a new rule uh, as well. So this is how our uh, template could look like. So yeah, so here's, you say basically, you know, um, this, are the, this is a trigger, this is, um, you know, are the conditions that need to be met, 
and um, this is you know what needs to happen um, you know when all the conditions are met. So this is a Java API, and this is let's say um, the Bosch IoT Gateway software specific part here. Um, so this is for the interaction with the functional item. So you can get available rules, you can add um, new rules, remove existing ones, update existing ones. You can enable, disable them, and you can um, you know execute them. And uh, the same for for module types. Um, and for rule template um, admin. So there is also a Java SPI. So here you can, um, you know, uh, basically, um, you know, collect or you can get all the available rules, and you can, you know, add or remove uh, uh, rules here. And the same basically for 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 the module uh, types. Um, so the template provider works the same way. So you see there's a lot of uh, similarities here. Um, so I don't go into the detail here. Um, we have also a REST API. And um, so here you basically see, um, you know, you can return, get, uh, get rules, returns all the registered uh, rule instances. Uh, you can add new rules and so on, just using the, the REST API, basically instead of um, the JSON. Um, same for module types, and again for rule templates. Um, and then, we are, as I said, we already have built-in module types. Um, so this is, uh, for example, uh, for triggers, yeah? So repeating time, so it's actually, you know, time you define when this, you know, trigger should start a rule. Uh, can be event based, um, can be based on the sun position. I don't know who did this one, but I guess there is a use case uh, for this. Um, probably, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, you know, uh, it seems sort of strange to me. But anyway, so when a, a property changes or when an um, you know, operation has been executed. So these are basically all potential uh, trigger module types. Um, for conditions, um, similar here, um, you know, uh, repeating time uh, can be one condition, sun position can be one condition, an item property, or uh, when a, a script, um, you know, satisfies, um, you know, the re re value, return value true. Yeah? Um, then actions, um, so here you can set a property, you can invoke an operation, and you can start a predefined um, script. And again, this is, is all modular. You can you know, define for each of the uh, um, yeah, categories your own module types. So and, um, we um, use in our framework um, the Apache um, web uh, console a lot. Um, so we use this, uh, you know, uh, basically locally in the framework to change, for example, configurations to deploy new bundles locally or um, to uninstall them, all these things. And we also use this basically, um, as I mentioned before, to, um, let's say, work with the automation engine. So here you have uh, the list of rules. Um, you can basically see their ID, their name, their status, the tags, and the description, and you can, um, you know, filter them accordingly. Um, and you can um, also, for example, add um, new rules here. Um, and this basically looks then like this here. Yeah. yeah so you have here. Um, you know, there's the information you have to provide, like uh, UID name, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can also basically, um, you know, add uh, new triggers, conditions, actions um, that make up um, this new rule. Um, so here you see, you could, um, you know, here you see some, some triggers that are already predefined. In this case, um, we take the time of day trigger. Um, you see here. And then you can basically say here, you know, what time the trigger should actually um, be, you know, um, executed. Um, 
So, and, and then you can add the conditions, yeah? So as I said, um, there are conditions that need to be satisfied. You can basically here define um, the condition, yeah? Um, the, 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 the module type for it, um, what output um, you expect, yeah? And the value it should meet, yeah? Um, and then you basically, um, um, let's say, have defined your, your um, you know, your rule if you want. And um, this is just to show that there are, let's say, other um, you know, uh, things you can work with, like the module types and rule templates. You also have here the list of module types with their names and, and you know, what type of category they are, like you know, if it's, uh, for example, action, condition, trigger. Um, and also here you can sort of you know, define new ones, you can edit existing ones. Um, I'm, and I don't go into the details here because it works similar, you know, to the, you know, with the, with the tr um, trigger or with the rules as I was showing it before. Um, and then um, there is also the rule templates uh, menu. Um, also here um, you see uh, um, the, the list. Um, and also here you can, you know, basically filter it again. Um, you have the description, you can add uh, new ones, you can edit existing ones and so on. Um, right, so um, I, I wanted to bring a demo, but unfortunately because of my travel uh, uh, schedule, I was not able to do that. But um, you find, uh, let's say, demos in our, um, Manual. They are not very exciting. That's why I didn't want to show them here. Yeah? So they, uh, you know, um, but there are demos to basically work uh, with it. And there's obviously also information on the uh, Eclipse Smart Home um, um, documentation site. So I think, ah, yeah. So this is uh, one thing I wanted to bring up. Um, I don't know if anybody from you knows uh, Bosch Connected World. Um, it's a conference we organize uh, annually. It's happening in Berlin. Next year it's going to be in uh, May 15 and 16. Um, and we also co-organize a hackathon. And you can see here, you know, this is uh, the hackathon area. Um, last year we had about 800, uh, you know, hackathon participants, so it's quite huge. Um, we also split it in different areas, like for example, you know, uh, industry for zero, uh, logistics, and so on. Um, and it's let's say for participants, you know, free of charge. So if you're interested in this, you can apply, and um, yeah, basically um, somebody yeah will select who gets access. But um, yeah, so anyway, uh, if you're interested, go to the website. Um, you will find more information there. And I guess that's it from my side for now. Thank you very much, Kai. Nice to see that uh, stuff from Eclipse Smart Home is also used at other places than OpenHub. So that's a very good thing. Yeah, maybe I, one thing I should mention. So, I mean, Please since do. I just said, uh, you know, we have it now in the Bosch IoT Gateway software. Um, so we now also try to, you know, convince our existing customers like Devolu and so on, right? Uh, Bosch Jäger, you name it, um, to basically adopt um, also, um, you know, to migrate to the new version, right? And then also use the uh, Eclipse Smart Home uh, automation engine, basically. I hope it doesn't need much uh, convincing. I don't think so, but... Uh... <laughs> okay, questions? Yeah. All right. One over ah. there. Hi, you showed the example using the web console to program and stuff. Can you, but uh, if you want to deploy it to systems, is how do you deliver the predefined rules or how do you manage that? Is it like through configuration admin or something or how do they, how does that get provisioned? Yeah, so it's, um, so that, uh, you know, we, we uh, you know, our remote manager, right? So we can basically, um, we have uh, like a repository there. And then uh, we can deploy those rules, um, you know, through the remote manager to, um, I don't know, in the field if you want, right? So using then also the standard services like Convic Admin, et cetera, et cetera. OK, 
Okay, any further question? Patrick? How would you describe the state of the documentation? <laughs> Which documentation? <laughs> So I think, um, so on the Bosch IoT Gateway uh, um, site, I was, uh, you know, checking it out, uh, you know, over the weekend. It looks pretty good. There are also demos. Um, so um, I, I, I think, you know, um, that's pretty good. I also checked the Eclipse Smart Home documentation. That's, let's say, maybe not so detailed, but still I think, you know, it shows you, you know, basically what you can do with it, right? So with examples and so on. And what about the the old rule engine? That the text-based rule engine is this to be phased out, or I don't know how how does the new version compare to the old version in terms of is it better in performance or? Do you mean now the Eclipse Smart Home? Uh, I guess that question is rather addressed to me. Than That's to why you. I'm asking. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> But as it's not my talk, I don't have to answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Kai and Kai, it just doesn't matter who answers, right? Um, no, the, the clear plan is to deprecate the old uh, rule engine and uh, only uh, deploy the new one, also in Open Hub as the main one. The major missing part to do that step is uh, to support the existing xText, xBase uh, rule DSL files, because obviously we don't want to break all uh, open up instances out there and say, well, just throw them away and now do them somehow completely different, all your rules. So um, the idea there is that we simply plug into this new rule engine actions and triggers, uh, which are then referring to the xBase interpreter and uh, some rule parser that reads the files as they are and splits them up into trigger con probably no conditions because that really doesn't exist in the uh, textual files, but in triggers and actions and uh, yeah, creates rules from these files. And once this is implemented, then I think we can deprecate the old rule engine and really base everything on the new one. Okay. All right. Perfect. So thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Thank you.